When people talk about green hydrogen, the conversation almost always revolves around the hydrogen itself. How it's produced, how much it costs, how we'll transport it, and what role it will play in decarbonizing heavy industries. But in the background of every electrolyzer, there's something quietly happening. A stream of pure oxygen being vented into the atmosphere. It's invisible in most reports and rarely mentioned in project headlines. Yet, this overlooked byproduct could hold one of the most underappreciated keys to improving the economics and sustainability of hydrogen production. The question is simple. What happens to the oxygen, and could it actually be valuable? To understand why this question matters, we need to go back to the chemistry. Green hydrogen is produced through electrolysis, the process of splitting water into its basic components, hydrogen and oxygen, using renewable electricity. The equation is straightforward. Two molecules of water become two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. But while most of the attention is on capturing and compressing the hydrogen gas, the oxygen is typically released, vented, ignored, and forgotten. For every kilogram of hydrogen produced, about eight kilograms of oxygen are generated. And in industrial scale plants, that's not a small number. A 100 megawatt electrolyzer can produce over 40,000 tons of oxygen per year. Scale that up to the multi-gigawatt projects now being planned across Europe, the Middle East, and Asia, and the volume has become staggering. Millions of tons of pure oxygen every year, quietly lost to the air. The irony is that oxygen itself is not an obscure gas. It's widely used in healthcare, steelmaking, wastewater treatment, chemical synthesis, and even space exploration. Yet in the context of green hydrogen, it's treated as a waste product. Part of the reason is economic. The infrastructure to collect, compress, and store oxygen adds cost. And unless there's a nearby buyer, transporting oxygen doesn't make financial sense. The result is that nearly all electrolyzers today are designed as hydrogen-only systems, with oxygen just released at atmospheric pressure. But as the global hydrogen economy scales up, this might change. Analysts and engineers are beginning to recognize that oxygen could play a subtle but important role in closing the loop on project economics. The key is location. If a hydrogen production site is situated near industries that already use oxygen, such as steel plants, glass manufacturers, or wastewater treatment facilities, the oxygen co-product could become a secondary revenue stream. Even modest prices like $50 to $150 per ton for bulk industrial oxygen can translate into millions of dollars annually for large plants. And when you're competing to bring the cost of hydrogen down from $5 per kilogram to $2 or less, every percentage point matters. Beyond the economics, there's an environmental argument too. Venting oxygen might seem harmless. After all, it's just returning to the atmosphere. But capturing and using that oxygen locally could avoid the need for separate air separation units, which are energy intensive systems traditionally used to produce industrial oxygen. A typical cryogenic air separation plant consumes around 200 to 250 kilowatt hours of electricity per ton of oxygen produced. If electrolyzers are already generating that oxygen for free, utilizing it instead of venting it could prevent unnecessary energy use and emissions elsewhere. In effect, it creates a cleaner, more circular industrial ecosystem. One of the most promising synergies is with green steel production. In the steel industry, oxygen is critical for converting iron ore into metal as it supports combustion in blast furnaces and direct reduction processes. Today, most of that oxygen comes from dedicated air separation units. But in the future, integrated hydrogen oxygen hubs could emerge, where the hydrogen produced by electrolysis is used in direct reduction furnaces and the oxygen is fed back into the process to enhance efficiency. In these setups, the two gases produced from water splitting each have a distinct purpose in the same value chain hydrogen as the reducing agent, and oxygen as the oxidizer. That's elegant chemistry and efficient engineering at work. Another sector where electrolytic oxygen could shine is wastewater treatment. Many treatment plants use oxygen to accelerate the breakdown of organic matter in what's called aerobic digestion. 
Traditionally, this oxygen is purchased or produced on-site at additional cost. If a nearby hydrogen project supplies that oxygen, the treatment plant gains a clean, reliable input, and the hydrogen producer gains a customer. The same logic applies to aquaculture, fermentation facilities, and algae cultivation. Any process that benefits from oxygen enrichment could become a natural partner for green hydrogen producers. There's also an emerging opportunity in synthetic fuels and carbon utilization. For example, in power-to-liquid facilities that produce e-methanol or e-kerosene, oxygen can support oxidation and reforming processes. Some designs even incorporate the oxygen directly into combustion cycles for higher efficiency. The more these integrated systems develop, the more sense it makes to treat electrolyzers not just as hydrogen generators, but as dual output machines producing two valuable gases. So, if the potential is so clear, why isn't it happening already? The main obstacle is infrastructure and design. Most electrolyzers are optimized for hydrogen production only. Their oxygen outlets are vented because adding compression, purification, and storage systems requires capital. To monetize the oxygen, developers need both a willing off-taker and a supply chain. Pipelines, tanks, or truck deliveries. Unlike hydrogen, which commands high prices per unit of energy, oxygen's market value is relatively low, meaning that logistics can quickly eat up profits. For this reason, oxygen utilization is only viable when the end user is close, ideally within a few kilometers. This is where the concept of symbiotic clustering comes in. Future hydrogen hubs could be designed not as isolated plants, but as industrial ecosystems. Picture a coastal region where an electrolyzer complex supplies hydrogen to a nearby ammonia plant, oxygen to a wastewater facility, and heat to a district energy network. By interlinking multiple industries through shared resources, each component benefits from the other's outputs. It's the same principle behind industrial symbiosis models like Kallenborg in Denmark, but applied to the hydrogen economy. Some projects are already experimenting with this idea. In Germany, for example, pilot plants are exploring how to integrate electrolyzers with local oxygen users to improve system efficiency. In Japan, researchers are assessing how oxygen streams can support algae growth and carbon capture systems. Even in the Middle East, where large-scale hydrogen production is planned, developers are considering whether oxygen can assist in enhanced oil recovery or desalination processes. While these examples are still at pilot or conceptual stages, they signal a shift in mindset, from focusing solely on hydrogen to understanding the full value chain of water electrolysis. From a financial modeling perspective, incorporating oxygen sales can modestly improve project metrics. For a typical 100 megawatt green hydrogen plant producing around 18,000 tons of hydrogen annually, the associated oxygen could exceed 140,000 tons per year. If even half of that is captured and sold at $80 per ton, that's roughly $5.6 million in additional revenue. Over a 20-year project life, that translates into more than $100 million in gross value. While that won't transform the economics overnight, it can meaningfully reduce the levelized cost of hydrogen by about 5 to 10% enough to make the difference between marginal and bankable. But beyond numbers, there's a systems level insight here. When we think of decarbonization, we often focus on single outcomes. Clean hydrogen, low carbon steel, renewable ammonia. Yet the real transition depends on interconnectedness. Every time we split a molecule of water, we create not just hydrogen, but oxygen. Ignoring half the output is a luxury the world can't afford if we aim to optimize resource use. The future energy system will need to be more circular, where byproducts become inputs and waste becomes value. In some regions, policymakers are beginning to catch on. The European Union's renewable hydrogen frameworks are gradually recognizing co-products like oxygen and heat as potential credits in life cycle assessments. This means that projects capturing and using their oxygen might gain additional environmental or regulatory benefits. Similarly, funding bodies and financiers could start rewarding projects that show higher resource efficiency as it aligns with broader circular economy principles. That could open new doors for grants, green bonds, or low-interest loans linked to sustainable performance metrics. 
Technologically, advances are also helping. Some modern electrolyzer systems can produce medical-grade oxygen streams, meeting stringent purity standards. This opens up potential for integration with healthcare supply chains, especially in remote regions or islands where medical oxygen logistics are challenging. During the COVID-19 pandemic, for instance, several small-scale electrolyzer units were repurposed to provide local oxygen supplies for hospitals, a real-world demonstration that these systems can serve dual purposes when needed. Yet, for all these opportunities, it's important to stay realistic. The global oxygen market is already well supplied by large industrial gas companies like Linde and Air Liquid. For most hydrogen producers, oxygen will remain a secondary product, not a primary business. The market is unlikely to suddenly become worth trillions, but what it can do is quietly enhance the efficiency and sustainability of hydrogen ecosystems. Instead of venting value, we can design smarter systems that use every molecule produced. The story of green hydrogen has always been about turning water and electricity into energy for a cleaner world. But in the rush to focus on hydrogen as the hero, we've overlooked the companion gas that completes the reaction. The future of energy might not just be hydrogen powered, it could be oxygen aware. As new projects break ground, Developers, policymakers, and financiers would do well to ask what happens to the oxygen. Because in that question lies a new opportunity for integration, optimization, and smarter design. Ultimately, this is about seeing the hydrogen economy as part of a larger, interlinked system. The electrolysis process represents a bridge between renewable power and molecular energy. On one side, we have electrons. On the other, molecules. But the bridge doesn't just carry hydrogen it carries oxygen too. Capturing that value means thinking holistically about how we build, locate, and operate hydrogen infrastructure. It's not just about megawatts and kilograms, it's about ecosystems. For developers, there's a practical takeaway. When assessing new green hydrogen projects, it's worth mapping out nearby oxygen users, industrial parks, water utilities, food processors, or hospitals. Including an oxygen valorization component in feasibility studies can add credibility to financial models and strengthen the sustainability case when applying for funding or certification. Even if the numbers aren't huge, the narrative of full resource utilization can set a project apart in an increasingly competitive field. There's also potential in developing standardized modular oxygen handling units, compact systems that can compress, purify, and deliver oxygen without major customization. This would make it easier for smaller projects to capture value without extensive engineering overhead. As the industry matures, we might see dedicated ONU as a service providers emerge, offering turnkey solutions for electrolyzer operators. It's also worth noting that capturing oxygen could have indirect safety and maintenance benefits. Controlled venting and monitoring reduce risks of localized enrichment in confined spaces, improving operational safety. In hot climates, oxygen venting can even be repurposed for secondary cooling or aeration processes on site. When the hydrogen economy reaches scale, like with gigawatts of electrolyzers operating globally, the cumulative oxygen output will be enormous. By then, ignoring it would be both an environmental and an economic missed opportunity. The smartest projects of the future will view every co-product not as waste, but as part of the revenue and sustainability equation. In the bigger picture, oxygen recovery ties into a deeper theme of resource circularity. Renewable energy, water, and air are all connected through chemistry and life itself. The electrolysis reaction simply mirrors what nature already does through photosynthesis. Splitting water to release oxygen, only this time, we're capturing hydrogen instead. Perhaps in this sense, designing hydrogen systems that make use of both gases is a way of aligning industrial processes more closely with natural cycles. As green hydrogen moves from pilot plants to full-scale industrial hubs, we'll need to move beyond single product thinking. The future energy transition won't be about one molecule or one technology. It will be about how multiple systems interact. And the humble oxygen bubble rising off the electrolyzer's anode might become the symbol of that interconnected future. A reminder that sustainability isn't just about what we produce, 
but also about what we choose not to waste. So, the next time you hear about a green hydrogen project, ask yourself, what happens to the oxygen? Because in that simple question lies a blueprint for smarter, more efficient, and more sustainable energy systems. If you're interested in learning how to design, develop, and finance green hydrogen projects that take these kinds of integrations into account, from techno-economic modeling to feasibility studies, visit h2hub.reneenergy.com. There you can access tools, templates, and in-depth learning modules that help you think beyond hydrogen and start designing the connected energy ecosystems of the future.